For fuck's sake, Carl, seriously, like, it's gonna look so shit. You're right, there's a lot of sun in here, isn't there? One sec. There we go. Now there's nothing that's gonna mess up the video. Few moments in the Batman mythos are as ridiculous or made as much fun of by fans as that one time in the 1960s where Adam West Batman fought off a shark full of explosives with a can of shark repellent bat spray. As it turns out though, that scene is actually pretty faithful to the original comics which shows that the Dark Knight does indeed carry around a can of shark mace with him at all times just in case some sharks want to start some shit. It has actually been quite a long time since Adam West Batman graced our screen. It has, hasn't it? Rip in peace, Batman, rip in peace. So do you want to explain what's happening in that scene? That scene in particular, yes, I'd love to because it's amazing. In the 1966 Batman film, based on a series of the same name starring Adam West, the Kate Crusade is attacked in mid-air by a shark stuffed with explosives while hanging from a ladder from a helicopter. Holy sardine! To make the whole scene more ridiculous, the helicopter is actually a bat-themed helicopter called the Batcopter, and the ladder is a bat-themed ladder called the Bat Ladder. <laughs> Because of course it fucking is. Before we continue, can we just for a moment appreciate how utterly and hopelessly uncreative the character of Batman is to name every single one of his gadgets the Bat Blank. Adam West Batman took the piss a bit, like obviously with the Bat Ladder and the Bat Copter and the Shark Repellent Bat Spray, but even like gritty dark Batman still calls his computer the Bat Computer. Even Batman of the future, when you've got like old ass Batman, still like unironically refers to it as the Bat Computer and the Batarang. I get it, like he's committed to a theme and I respect that, but how unaerodynamic do Batarangs look to you? And the thing like, and well, he's trying to avoid suspicion as being Batman. How suspicious is it that you order through your company 40,000 bat-shaped pieces of metal that you then sharpen on a leg? <laughs> I know there's a lot of them, Brad, but can you think off the top of your head of your favourite bat prefix? It has to be the bat credit card. Never leave the cave without it. The bank. Just because, <laughs> does he have a separate bank? What the is? Bat Bank. Yeah, because obviously he was like, if he pulled his credit, I said Bruce Wayne on it. Well, Bruce Wayne's Batman. I miss that era of heroes and villains in comic books just naming things after themselves. So I want, in the next Infinity War movie, I want the Thanos copter to make a return. Have you, like, people don't know? The putting a picture of the Thanos copter. That's part of your real No, in the one comic, Thanos has a helicopter called the Thanos copter. That's just got the word Thanos right on the side. <laughs> I miss that stuff, it's amazing! I miss when you used to go into the shop and like to sell you bullshit, toy manufacturers just came up with gadgets for heroes that they never used in the comics. Like, oh here's the spider car that Spider-Man uses with missiles on it. It's like, Spider-Man doesn't need a car! Back to naming shit, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Oliver fucking Queen, aka Green Arrow, because there is a great moment in one comic where Oliver Queen takes Harley Quinn to his own, like his, his version of the Batcave called the Arrow Cave. And Harley Quinn, as soon as she hears the name, goes, that's a stupid name, why don't you just call it the Quiver? And Ollie Queen goes, fuck, that is a good name. <laughs> Getting back to that 1966 Batman film, after delivering a few ineffectual bat punches to the shark's shark kidneys, Batman calls the boy wonder Robin up in the Batcopter to ask him for a can of shark repellent bat spray. Hand me down the shark repellent bat spray. We've talked about this before, but I want to bring it up again. This is the best representation of Batman in any piece of media ever. Adam West Batman is the best representation of Batman ever because He's the only one I'm aware of who is prepared so thoroughly for every conceivable situation he actively plans for mid-air shark attacks. Christian Bale Batman didn't do that. Christian Bale Batman, in which everyone like loves, oh, that, that's the best Batman. Like, he gets into a fight with Bane, a master of the same martial arts as him, and he tries to beat him in a punching contest. He never thinks to use any of those gadgets he's got, like, you know, the sleep darts that he uses the in the bat movie. Sleep darts. Yeah, the bat sleep darts. He never thinks to use, like, you know, that thing he gets on his leg, you know, his robo leg that he uses to, like, kick through concrete. 
the thing that never comes into play ever again, even <laughs> when um, Bane's got him in a fucking chokehold. Do you know what I mean? A chokehold, a good way to stop someone. It's a stamp on their foot with like a robot assisted foot stomp, but that never comes back. As far as I'm aware, Adam West Batman had more than just the shark repellent. Oh, yes, he does, because in addition to preparing for mid air shark attacks, in the Batcopter, Batman has various other sprays, like, you know, to fend off the most dickish denizens of the ocean, including barracudas, manta rays, and whales. So, I'm just now thinking, like, how, like, Batman is playing 4D chess, and he's like a million moves ahead. He's like not even playing the same game as all the superheroes anymore, is he? When he's prepared for mid air whale attacks. What scenarios is this man envisioning where he's in his helicopter and he's gonna need whale repellent? Maybe watch Free Willy. Oh my god, maybe. Oh my god, can you imagine that? <laughs> Can you imagine Free Willy, but instead of like when he jumps over and the kid like touches the belly of Free Willy, instead of just Batman spray in to get back in, Batman works for SeaWorld. Oh man, that's good. That's a photo shot right there. The Free Willy poster, but it's Batman just spraying Free Willy. <laughs> just macing him. Oh. After being sprayed in the face by the shark repellent bat spray, the shark understandably loosens its kung fu mouth grip on Adam West Batman's leg and falls harmlessly into the ocean where it explodes into a cloud of cheap sushi and pre-made shark fin soup. For some reason though, fans of Batman, or should I say fans of the more dark and brooding version of Batman that beat up Superman in that one comic, don't like this scene because it portrays the Dark Knight as being kind of silly and it's unrealistic for him to be prepared for something so stupid, even though that's exactly what Batman does in all of the comics. Another criticism of that scene is that it's just bad writing to show Batman escaping from a seemingly inescapable situation by using a gadget that has never been alluded to or mentioned before, even though it totally has. What do you mean? I don't remember that ever being mentioned, ever. Not in the show, but in the original comics, specifically Batman issue 117, it is shown that Batman does indeed carry around shark repellent spray in his utility belt at all times. So how do you find this out? Well, in that story, Batman and Robin get sent to an alien planet. Just, just go with it, guys. And they're trapped underwater and they get attacked by a giant purple sea dragon. And Batman pulls out some shark repellent spray Reasoning that if it works on the killers of the deep on Earth, it should work on the killers of the deep on this planet too. And this being a comic book, it does. And the big purple sea dragon runs away. The important thing to note though here is that Batman absolutely does carry shark repellent spray and there was a precedent for it six years before that movie ever got released. If you could have a utility belt, what do you reckon you'd have in it? The back credit card. Because I, I love the idea of like what happens if Batman overspends. Are they really going to send a bailiff to get money from Batman? That's the bravest motherfucker on earth right there, and it's like that scene in like The Dark Knight. Where it's like, oh, so you think Bruce Wayne, a billionaire, is a guy who beats people up at night in a robot suit, and you want to blackmail this dude? It's like the guy at the bank. Okay, we need to go get money from these people. Oh, okay, so Mrs. Jones actually has like $40. Uh, Mr. Smith, he bought a fridge last week and he can't pay for it. A new Batman bought 40,000 Batarangs last week and charged it on his back credit card. Go get the money from him. Where's, where's his address? The Batcave. And where's that? Oh, it's, it's just listed as the Batcave. We really didn't think this through. We really didn't think through giving this guy a credit card. If I was that bank and I needed someone to go brown breaking back, so I'd get in the Bane lift. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> that pun was so bad, I just don't want to talk about Batman anymore. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> I know, Brad, that I said that pun was bad, but I do have to admit it was a very Batman-esque pun. I can imagine, like, Robin in the 1960s show saying a pun that bad, so congratulations on that one. That's something I want to bring back in the, um, if they ever bring Robin back. I mean, obviously not the Titans. No, yeah, the Titans are, fuck, fuck Batman. Batman. It's where he goes, gee fuck, golly. No, no, fuck Batman, fuck that show. I'd really appreciate some levity in the stuff I watch for fun. I don't like, the, we have to mention the best example, it just has to be Man of Steel which is two and a half hours long. It's colour graded to shit, so it all looks dark and depressing. And it has a scene in it where Superman drowns in a pit of skulls. No! No! I watched that film in the cinema and kids started crying and I can see why. There are so many baffling moments in that movie that just shit all over the idea of Superman as a character. Like, what's your favourite, Brad? Because mine's just the pit of skulls. <laughs> just, it's like, yeah, Superman's like, I'm going to save the day. Ah, just 
drowning in skulls. I think it's the complex mindfuck that is Kevin Costner's Daddy Ken. Oh my god. <laughs> if people don't have not read the comics, like the only reason Superman is a nice guy is because he was raised by like the nicest people in the world. And I think a common phrase used in the comics is that Superman is at heart just a farm boy from Kansas trying to do the right thing. And the reason why is because his parents are just so nice. So I remember watching the movie and it's like Kevin Costner just tells him, sometimes Superman, you don't have to rescue a bus full of children. It's like they could, like, I get where they're going. You have to hide your powers. Don't say it after he pushes a bus full of drowning children out of a fucking river. It's like, what am I supposed to do, Dad? Just let them die? Yes, yeah, sometimes. Sometimes, son, yes. Well, there, and then there's the bit where he just stands there and goes, don't come rescue me. And it's like, he could have walked over and just grabbed him and it would, no one would have gone, <laughs> that man's an alien. Yeah, no, that they, man they, is they definitely just, a super really alien. Just as a miracle. That's it. It's oh wow, I can't leave size. Like, yeah, I was really lucky. Wow, yeah, okay. But no, like just holds his hand out just face. And the best bit is, in the next movie, they double down and have his mum say the same thing. <laughs> like in Batman vs. Superman, where Martha, you don't owe these people anything. That's the point. He doesn't, but he does it anyway. He's a nice guy. Because he's not supposed to be raised by sociopathic dickholes. It's, it's so baffling. And you know what you have to put in? You've got to put in, I found out recently that this is a thing that existed, like, the end of the movie, we all know, it ends with Superman breaking Zod's neck. Like, Superman, the character defined by the fact he never kills anybody and he always tries to do the right thing, just killing his villain by just snapping his fucking neck. There is a scene from behind the scenes of Zack Snyder showing Henry Cavill how he wants him to act that scene out, and it's Zack Snyder just snapping some guy's neck. <laughs> And people, people keep editing it to put Zai on the on the face of the guy he's snapping the neck off, just the DC universe. It's just Zack's like, like a, <laughs> oh, so, oh man, so. All, right, all I want is some levity in my movies. What about people wearing tights flying around? <laughs>